Well, hey, Jen Crevasse, Jekyll Bates, and it's a spray session. It is our Christmas holiday spray session, which means we're going to be focusing on Christmas type colors, type baits, two simple fun patterns, absolute fish catchers, very fun, very easy to do. This one, I've already got base coated white. This one is going to be a black base coat. You know, I'm presuming that you guys know how to put base coats on here by this point. If you guys have been hanging out with the channel for a while, I'm sure you guys are spot on with putting on base coats. If you're putting on two base coats, one that's black and one that's white, always aim your airbrush away from the other bait and you can do it while being on the same helping hands and still coat the entire bait. No worries there. Now this first pattern is probably going to take you guys about three seconds to pull off. Maybe a little bit more, but really this is simple. I'm using lace. You could do it more like a candy cane style and wrap. Maybe some tape around here. However you wanted to achieve the goal, but there's two colors. We've got a base white and I'm going to use a little bit of lace on here just because I want a little bit fancier of a pattern. This is going to be the peppermint pattern. And it's just red and white. Let's try putting it on this way. Because I know I've used this. As a matter of fact, if you go back and re-watch or watch for the first time, perhaps, the four airbrush hacks in two minutes, this is one of those patterns. biggest thing with this is that you really want to stretch this tight and you don't want to overspray because this is lace, uh, which means that it's a fabric material and it will absorb paint. That's my one ask for you guys on this one. Anytime you use a fabric mesh and not a metallic or um, something that's been made with a chemical combination like vinyl, this is definitely an absorbing fabric. So you don't, you just want light, quick spray, heat set, get it off of there. Word to the wise. So we're just wrapping this real, real tight. As a matter of fact, I'm going to put this one. This is an older one. And it's got a little bit less teeth pull in it. I'm trying to gather that up. There we go. So I don't want a bunch of overhang on this, and we want this super tight. And maybe one more back here. So you really want this wrapped as tight as possible, just to keep any bleed through from coming in. Maybe even one more in between here. Just make sure all that material is bunched in. And then we're just going to quickly spray a red don't need to reduce on this. I am going to bring the PSI down just a little bit. I'm shooting around 30 and just get one even and then just work yourself up. And the twist, what's going to make this really pop is going to be the eyes. The pattern I think in itself is a very cool pattern. I like the lace on it. It's something that you don't always see unless you're a custom painter or you fish with custom lures. But you just want a good, solid layer. Make all that white disappear. Just go back over this once. Now that we have all this dried, I heat set for about a minute on that. Just really wanted to make sure that it was good and dry. And now we have this really cool red and white peppermint pattern. Very intricate and you can see that we did not get bleed through. This is exactly how you want this to look. Now we're going to add some eyes to this and be done with the bait. We're going to get it some clear coat. Now for me on this pattern, it's a no-brainer. For looking at Christmas colors, it's traditional that we have green to complement the red. It'll be a little bit different when we get over to the Santa Claus because that's the next pattern. Always put a drop of glue. Does not have to be this glue, it just happens to be what I have. 
and I usually purchase what's on sale. Small drop is fine. And just drop that down. I usually have just a couple of seconds to play around with that. With these, I prefer to get the eyes towards the front. Now these will take almost like six threes, uh, six fives. Now one thing a lot of you guys ask me all the time, I do keep a bunch of these on hand, is where do I get these eyes that are glow, that are these molded chromes? They're from Lure Parts Online. They come 25 to a pack and here's your numbers. 28, 18 and 6 for 6 millimeter. They come in 5s and 6. 56 is your color number for the green. So there you have, actually it's called Lime. It's a number 6 Lime Chrome. And they are bright, bright, bright as the day is long. I love them. So there you have it. That is the peppermint pattern. And again, it can be done with, if you want to wrap it like a candy cane, you can do it that way. There's a lot of different ways you guys can be creative with a very simple bait that is absolutely going to catch you fish, especially, I'm doing red because it's winter time, guys, and you know there's something about bass. They just turn on to the color red. So there you have it, peppermint. This next one is going to be similar with a wrap. We're going to do a wrap, but we have a black base on this one. And we're going to be doing a very simple crawl pattern. You guys are all familiar with the style of crawl pattern that I do. I use hand cut stencils. Now you guys have asked to see the hand cut stencils that I use. So I will be more than, you know, we're going to use a different, this one's starting to fall apart. This will do. Matter of fact, this is what I did the last crawls on. You guys did ask to see the hand cut stencils that I use, and I will be more than happy to show them to you. Let's get this wrapped up first. And again, we want to keep this tight. This is a little bit easier to manage than the fabric lace we were just using on the other one, simply because it's a non-soluble um, so the liquid is not going to bleed into the fabric. It's not fabric actually, it's synthetic. But we still want to get it tight so we have a good wrap on it. And then you can obviously see the pattern. Most of you guys have probably used this type of mesh before. If you haven't, I've got descriptions below and where to find it. And I'm sure there's a link there. So there we have it. Now we have the black, so that's going to show the veining as we go through. And you can see I've done this once before, so we're going to have red on the bottom. Or let's do something a little bit different. Let's kind of do it red and green. So on top of this black, we're going to add just a little bit of a white base. And that's going to make those colors stand out a little bit better. We could probably go red and green right on top of that black, but there's really no need and it's just one extra step. And again, this is a fairly simple pattern to pull off anyways. Now on that, we've decided that we're going to do a red and green since this is a Christmas holiday show. So I have pulled the white out of the chamber that I just used to do that secondary primer. And now we're going to add some red. Now on the first Santa Claus, I did red on the bottom and I did green on the top, but for this, I think I'm going to do it a little bit differently. Why do it all alike, right? Right. So on this, we're going to start out with a little bit of red in the chamber, but I think I'm going to do more of a random pattern with this. That's kind of what I'm feeling here. So we're just going to go around this bait. I'm just going to spray little bits here and there. And a little bit on top and we're going to come back through everything else that's still white. And we're going to put some green on it. Now because red and green are almost opposites in the color wheel, we don't want to keep the red in the chamber 
when we put the green in or it'll turn brown. So that's not what we want it to look like. But we're going to use a straight up green. This is a tropical green. So we used, what did I use here? Some Jacquard airbrush color, transparent red, and now we're going to be using some tropical green. It's a very happy Christmassy type green. Just a little bit there. Make sure all the cleaner is pushed out. And now we're just going to come back through and fill in all the rest of the white spot where we didn't lay down the red. We can get this fairly thick. It's fine. Heat set this for about a minute off camera. And the heat set was on high. And I, you guys know I use a little con air. But you guys were asking, I forget which forum it was in, I think it was on Facebook on one of the pages, what do we do about this? So a lot of times when you have these clamped together, these little pens kind of hamper the paint from getting everywhere you want it to get. On this one, it's not super, I, I don't think it's going to be a big deal. But because we are putting cross segments on the bottom of that, one thing we can do, give me just a second, let me get this out of here. We can come back with just a little bit of white, just a tiny, tiny bit. I'm gonna put this back up in the helping hands and I'm gonna show you what we're gonna do. It's just one extra step but it can make the difference. If this is what you're wanting to achieve, pull your pressure down. I'm gonna spray this eh, 15, somewhere around 15. We already have this concave convex from where it made uh, the imprint when it was up against there. And you just take this, run it into the belly of this and lightly so then you have this really cool, and then you can flip it to this side where you have your hook. And now it's gone. You have the same veining with a little bit of a white belly. And I think that looks fantastic. And then we're gonna put some cross segments across the bottom anyways, but that is a quick way to use the same material that you were just using, flip it around put it down against the belly of your bait because usually the belly is a little concave and this is convex from where it just made the imprint and do that. If you hold it steady, you're gonna get this really cool mesh pattern and that way you have a lighter shaped belly, which is what you want anyways. So we're all set with these clips. We can put them back. I like to keep everything as organized as I can when I'm working on a bench. So I usually have more than one thing going on at once. Now I do use cut stencils that are prepaid that I've ordered online either from Russ or from a number of different sources but I also cut my own stencils so I wanted to lay these out showing you how I cut my craws and all I've done here is an exacto knife just in the shape of a basic craw segment and that's it so today we're going to be using this one and this one, just need two. I'm gonna load some black into the chamber, turn my pressure way back. It's medium gray. Well, I just had it, there it is. We are gonna use straight up black on this because we already have dark colors on here. And just like with all the other craws that I've done on this show, we are gonna start with, of course, the back because it helps you line up the sides. So that's the best tip that I can give you guys when you're doing, when you're just starting out with craws. And I'm running my pressure around 20. When you're just starting out with craws, always do the top, do the spine first. 
I'm not going to do a whole bunch of segments on this, just two. Just keep it basic for you guys. And one here in the middle. There we go. And then we're going to turn this way. And we're going to get this, we're going to continue this little spot around here. Get that in there so that it looks legit. And then we just take what we just sprayed here and spray, continue that line down the side. And then do the same thing with the back. We're just following the lines. It's so much easier that way. So much, so, so, so much easier that way. Now if you want to get fancy, since this is a little high up, you can put that under segment on. And there you have it. We do the same thing on the other side. You just flip the stencil over. Start with the eye socket. And get that happy so that that lines up. You see that it does. Sorry, I just realized I'm flipping you guys off. I wasn't trying to. And then always use your stencil to shield from excess paint. You get that, come on now, there it is. You don't want to overly shade it. There we go. And line that up. Put your back piece on. Just connect that and put this under segment on here too just to be consistent with the other side. And now we have two sides and we're going to do the back. We got that light color in there so that'll be pretty easy peasy lemon squeezy which will also help these segments show up that much better there we go coming down the home stretch and one more for good measure. Always get the excess paint off before you do anything else because we want to be complete. We want to make sure that these cross segment lines go all the way to the edge. So you just come back and add that finishing touch to it. Make that crawl belly complete. Flip it over. And do the same thing. Those look like they do. This one's a little short there. Just continue it on. Give this a good cleaning when I'm done. This one is very short. Get that one all away. And one more. Una mas. There you have it. I've made a very tiny Christmas tree stencil. Very tiny. And here's how you make sure you put it in the middle. If you're going to do red, which we are, I did green on the last one, we're going to do red on this one. I want you to put a dot right in the center of the eye or as close to the center as you can get. Just do one. There you go. Now we have four dots right there in the center. And that is going to be how you indicate the center of your eye. I've got these on alligator clips because it's much easier than trying to fat finger everything down onto there. But, very lightly, and up. 
and very lightly and up. Same thing for however many eyes you're going to do. And just a fun way to dress up your eyes. You don't have to do it like that. But when you're done, you have Christmas tree eyeball, which can be festive. We're kind of crafting this one out a little bit, but hey, it, it is Christmas time. And there's your tree. The biggest thing to remember on stuff like this is that you want to get the same color right here. So red Sharpie for red intricate stuff on here. <laughs> um, it costs, what, $3 to get an eight pack of Sharpies. You can hit all the primary colors. But that's just an easy way to line up the center of your eye so that you'll nail that every time if you do decide to get a little creative. And remember to come back and put on one drop. Just a tiny drop, that's too much. So I'm gonna have to pull that off. Bummer, there we go. Got most of that off, I think. Set that off to the side. We'll put that eye on first because that's going to be a pain in the butt. And then just peel these off. If you have any excess paint, just lightly pull that off. The paint will stick to the eye nine times out of ten. And there you have it. Just drop that eye down. And if you want to use the tip of a pen, use the tip of the pen just to inset that correctly. And do the same thing on your other eye. Just peel that up off of the sheet. And that one came out perfect. No excess white paint. Just set that down into the eye socket. Tap very lightly with the edge of a pen. Just make sure that those eyes are inset well. Don't scratch the paint. Be very gentle. And there we have it. Folks, that's going to wrap up today's holiday edition of the Jekyll Bait Spray Session. I'm going to try and get one more in before the end of the year for you guys. I know it's the holidays. It's things get crazy around the holidays. You're traveling. I'm traveling. Everybody's doing a million things with their family and their friends, and they're trying to make merry. This is one way that you guys can make merry right in your own workshop. So I hope that I've been able to teach you guys a few things today. As always, I appreciate each and every one of you stopping by the channel. We did some fancy eyes on one of them. I gave you the product information on how to find the other cool one. We did a peppermint pattern and Santa Claus. So you guys have a great day. I'll see you on the next video. Happy casting from Jekyll Bates.